Hi, this is Jeff Eaton. Okay, this is the 2020 update for my installing TensorFlow and Keras in PyCharm. So this shows how to do this in 2.0 with the latest version, the 2019.3 version of PyCharm. They fixed some bugs in that, in PyCharm, that makes this much, much easier. So definitely, if you're going to use PyCharm, use the latest with TensorFlow 2.0 and follow these instructions, you should be fine. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. Okay, so let's go ahead and install TensorFlow with PyCharm. So this is an update for my previous video. My previous video had to get around a couple of bugs and I believe it was PyCharm that dealt with using TensorFlow. So let's go ahead and just get Let's get Minaconda installed. You can use the full Anaconda. It just depends. If you, I like having a minimal environment and I'll install what I need. If you just want everything known to man installed for you ahead of time, then install the full Anaconda, but they both work pretty similar. Okay, this is downloading. I'll let that complete. Go ahead and launch it. So I'll do next. I'll agree. Just for me, I find works the best. It's going to put it in C colon users J Heat and Minaconda 3. I like that location. That works well. Sometimes it puts it off in a hidden directory. I think the older versions did that. I don't like that as well. So I'll go to next. This is controversial. Adding Anaconda to your path environment. I usually do this on all of my computers, but I am willing to take the ramifications of it maybe breaking other things and having to roll back my path. I've never had once had this break anything, but I'm going to leave this off just so if you want to install it this way, you can see the difference. I will go ahead and click install. It's going through the installation process. While it is doing that, I'm going to multitask just a bit. I am going to download PyCharm. Now we're doing Python 3.7. Go ahead and just grab the latest of whatever Python has. It does not matter. We're going to create a virtual environment anyway. We are going to use also the latest version of PyCharm. We are in the year, at least I am, you'll be further in the time space-time continuum, 2020, February. I will go ahead and download. There's a pay version and a free version. I have never used the professional version or wanted anything that it really had. Um, I'm often just using from the command line, so I'm good with the community version. And by the way, this is a Windows 10 instance with nothing installed other than Chrome. Just can't deal with Edge. And I'll go ahead and download. That little pop-up was probably something from Minaconda. Oh, hold on. I clearly did something wrong. Download. Oh, it was already going. Okay. So PyCharm is on its way. This is complete. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And I don't want to learn about Anaconda Cloud. And I know how to get started. So finish. That's on its way down. While that's coming down, let me go ahead and we're going to get a YAML script that I created that does all of the installation of TensorFlow for you. And I keep this script up to date. It's used with my class that I teach on deep learning at Washington University. So I'm just searching on GitHub, Jeff Heaton, takes you to my Git repository. This is my class. First very important step is to star my repository. Just kidding, you don't have to do that, but I wouldn't mind it if you did. It'll keep you up to date whenever I change anything related to any of this material on deep learning, TensorFlow, and Keras. Go to class one. And basically I have the instructions on just how to install TensorFlow with Keras. TensorFlow 2.0, by the way. I'm just scrolling down when you get down to here. Now, I do have some other instructions up here. I'm assuming you're installing Jupyter. For what I'm doing in this video, I'm assuming you're not installing Jupyter, but you certainly can. Just follow these other instructions or follow my other video that shows you how to install Jupyter. Now, here I have the YAML files. There is the normal YAML file that we're going to use for this example, and then there's the GPU. If you want to do GPU, it is more than just putting this YAML file in there. I have an entire video on how to 
to do the GPU. If you want GPU, follow that video, get it working in Jupiter, and then, or skip the part on Jupiter if you don't want, want Jupiter, and then pick up with this video at the point that I've ran this YAML file. Everything else will be the same, but you've got to install CUDA drivers and CUDA and, and a bunch of other stuff. GPU installs are not easy, but I'm going to get this file, download it, save the link as, so I just right clicked it, saved it as, I am going to put it in my user directory. This would be wherever you want to put it. And I'm gonna call it TensorFlow. I'm gonna say save as YAML type, but Windows really likes to lie on that. I bet you any money it'll stick a TXT on the end of it. Oh, it didn't, that's awesome. They must have improved that. Okay, so we now have that Tensor, flow yaml file has been downloaded this command is what you're going to want to run copy that and the yaml file as of the recording of this video does work with tensorflow 2.0 i'll update it as as things change so it'll install tensorflow 2.0 with python 7 i always set that file up to install the latest versions of everything that's compatible with everything else sometimes you can't run the latest version of python because tensorflow just doesn't support it yet so i am going to run cmd to get up the command prompt Ooh, actually don't do that that if you would have clicked that install into the path then you could do this we have to use the anaconda prompt so Anaconda prompt, it's for Minaconda. There's no Minaconda prompt. We run that, and now we have this base environment. We're going to install another TensorFlow environment, another Python environment called TensorFlow. That YAML file has all the instructions for all the packages that you need for my class, which are pretty general for things that you would want just to get started with TensorFlow. So I'm going to run this. This takes a moment more than a moment. It takes probably five to ten minutes. So I'm going to simply let this run and fast forward through this for you. You don't need to sit through all of this. Actually, while you're waiting for all of this, you can install PyCharm. So let's go ahead and install PyCharm while it's going. I'll probably still have to fast forward something at the end, but let's go to downloads. You can see that I've downloaded PyCharm already. I'm just going to double click this. This is the 2019 3.3 version. They've got Python really working pretty nice with this right now and TensorFlow. I really hope they don't break anything because they sometimes break things and you have to do these special workarounds like I did in my last video, but I'm gonna say yes, we're going to install it. Click next to continue. That's a perfectly good place to install it. I don't usually add any of these. I just go ahead and click next. You might want to associate with the Py extension. This installs really relatively, relatively quickly. I like multitasking, having two things installing at once. What could possibly go wrong? And nothing does in this case. I've, I've done this before. So we're fast forwarding through this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run it so that it, it launches. While it is launching, I can see Minaconda, Minaconda is still installing TensorFlow. Okay, PyCharm is up. I'm not gonna import settings. If you've got previous versions, that might not be a bad thing to do. So pretty of a splash screen, 2019.3. I am going to accept these licenses that I ne oops, that I never read. I'm kidding, I read them in their entirety. Usage, this is a virtual machine computer that's going to be blown away. I mean, why bother? But if you wanna help PyCharm, by all means, send them information. All right. I am going to go ahead and use the dark. I am going to skip the remaining and set defaults. PyCharm is massive. It's got a ton of stuff in there. Okay, it's loading for the first time. And by the way, if you are trying to use an older version of PyCharm, I will warn you there's a bug that will make TensorFlow somewhat difficult. If you do want to run this on an older version, you can see my previous video. Okay, we're going to just leave it there for now pop back to here, this continues to install. So I am going to fast forward this. Okay, so now we have the environment installed. What I can do is activate it. So the way that this works is you have a base environment that has potentially one version of Python installed, and you can create these other environments that have different versions of Python and different sets of packages installed. So just to test it, I'm gonna conda, activate TensorFlow. 
Notice the prompt has changed TensorFlow. And I'll do Python. You can see we're in 376 or whatever you happen to have installed. Now, if you installed, say, something like Python 3.8 and followed the rest of my instructions, you'd still see 3.7 here because my YAML script told it to install 3.7. And I won't update that script until TensorFlow and the other packages that I use for my class actually support it. So let's do import TensorFlow as TF. Get an error, this is where it'll probably happen. Or you might have gotten an error up here in the process of installing. The best bet there is just to Google your error. You can post them in the comments. I'll answer if I know what the error means, but I haven't necessarily run into every problem that you might run into. So Googling and looking at Stack Overflow is probably your best bet. So I'm just gonna do print tf dot underbar underbar version underbar underbar, it should say 2.0. So we have 2.0 version of TensorFlow or whatever version my YAML script was configured to install. So I'm gonna quit. And really I'm basically done with this command prompt. Now we're going to go over here into PyCharm. I'm going to create a new project. Now there's a few things you have to do here every time you create a new project so that it uses that environment you just created. So I am going to call this TF test, call it anything you want. Open this part here though. I am not going to create a new environment. That's somewhat redundant because you would have been creating a new environment just like was created here. I think it's unfortunate that that's the default that PyCharm uses because I don't want, I don't want to have a separate environment for every project that I have. I do reuse those to some degree. So I am going to use an existing interpreter. No Python interpreter selected, that's fine. This is how we're going to link TensorFlow, the environment, up here. So you click these dots over here, we're gonna add an interpreter, and we're going to do a conda environment. So the interpreter, notice it is, it, it actually found it, so that's good. If you didn't, if it didn't find it here, what you would do is you would go and navigate to Jay Heaton or whatever your name is, your login, Minaconda 3, ENVS, and then whatever you named it there in Python EXE. And it also has a path to the Conda executable, which is in the more central location. You don't you don't do it underneath ENV's TensorFlow. This is in the main root. So yours should look something like this. I am going to make it available for all projects. And I'll click OK. So now we're going to use that interpreter and we're basically ready to go. I'm gonna click Create. And it loads up the components. This might take a moment. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to skip a step, but we'll see the error that we get. This is a very common error, so I want to I want to demonstrate it. I'm going to do new and create a new and this I I do recommend fixing. I don't honestly I haven't honestly had problems with, with this, so I will let it configure automatically. Okay, so you might not see that pop up either. It just depends on how your virus security is set. But I'm going to right click before I was so rudely interrupted by a pop up and create new and then file. And I'm going to create test.py. And there's test.py. And what I'm going to do is import TensorFlow as TF. Same exact program we tested the command prompt with. Print TF dot underbar underbar version underbar underbar and save it the thing that i dislike about pycharm is i can't just right click this and run it like i can do in vs code and other things i've got to actually create a run configuration so that's what i'm going to do here i'm going to do run run dot dot I'm gonna edit the configurations because there are none. And then I have to click plus. I mean, all this stuff just to run a file. Click the plus button and we're going to create Python script path. You, now the error I was saying I would, I would get before, I'm gonna go ahead and skip. What I would do sometimes is I would just type test.py here and get into, get into trouble. But we're going to actually navigate to that file. Takes a moment. And this one. Okay, and you can add parameters if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and just run it. If anything goes wrong, this is where it'll happen. So we're running it. They have to update all those skeletons in their closet. So we need to wait for that. Okay, it looks like it's going. 
Still updating skeletons, we're fast forwarding through this. And here we have it, 2.0.0. So this is much easier than it was in previous versions of PyCharm. Now, if you want to learn how to use TensorFlow and other things, definitely check out my class and playlist. It's a full 14 module university class on TensorFlow. Everything is available in YouTube and in GitHub. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel.